Hey there, it's Pastor Josh, and I may speak pretty fast because it's blue skies right now, but there's a storm that's uh, pushing in. You might hear some thunder in this. But I want to tell you about a story that happened a couple of weeks ago at Food Lion. I'm done with my shopping, and it was something little. I didn't like fill a card or anything. So I walk outside, and it was nighttime, and I look and I see something in the parking lot. You know what it was? It was a $20 bill, and I'm like, thank you. 20 bucks but then my brain started to fight against itself and I, I had the thought maybe I should take it back to the store give it to the manager then who who's ever 20 bucks that is they can come back and get it maybe that's the right thing to do or maybe I should just keep it you know finders keepers and there's nothing wrong about keeping this 20 bucks right and then another part of me was like looking around for cameras because I thought maybe something somebody's pranking me. I didn't know what to do. I mean, for for a moment there, my brains got all these things going on, and I didn't know what to do. Maybe you're in a similar situation that you've got something going on with your friends or your family where you don't know what to do. That is why we are doing this series called What to Do When You Don't Know What to Do. We've been following this life of Joseph. So far we've seen, okay, his brothers hate him. <laughs> they throw him into a pit, convince the father that an animal killed him. Then they sell him into slavery. Great life so far, right? <laughs> well, come to find out, He's sold into slavery, and he ends up working for one of the officials of Pharaoh. Now, Pharaoh is like the king, emperor, all wrapped in together. Like, whatever he says goes. And he's got officials. And one of the officials is named Potiphar. And Potiphar is a fan of Joseph's. Not only was God with Joseph, but Potiphar really had favor on Joseph. So let's let's start reading here Genesis chapter 39. The Lord was with Joseph so that he prospered and he lived in the house of his Egyptian Egyptian master. When his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord gave him success in everything he did, Joseph found favor in his eyes and became his attendant. Potiphar put him in charge of the household and he entrusted to his care everything he owned. From the time he put him in charge of his household and of all that he owned, the Lord blessed the household of the Egyptian because of Joseph. The blessing of the Lord was on everything Potiphar had, both in the house and in the field. So Potiphar left everything he had in Joseph's care. When Joseph, with Joseph in charge, he did not concern himself with anything except the food he ate. So there's a great situation for Joseph. Potiphar trusts him. And with Joseph in charge, Potiphar was thriving. So, I mean, he's a huge fan. But things began to take a weird turn. Listen to this. Now, Joseph was well built and handsome. And after a while, his master's wife took notice of Joseph and said, Come to bed with me. Can we, can we talk about how bad this is? I mean, here you've got Joseph. Apparently he was a good looking guy. He's working hard for the boss Potiphar and his Potiphar's wife takes notice of Joseph. And, and just like that, she invited him to do something that was meant only for her and her husband, not her and Joseph. And basically Potiphar's wife was inviting Joseph to have an affair with her. So let's, let's just put this in modern day context for just a second. This is like you getting a, a message or Snapchat from your best friend's boyfriend or girlfriend. And they're asking you just to sneak around and, and hang out. They might be cute, but is it the right thing to do? So, having them sneak around and hang out isn't a great situation for you. 
right? I, I'm, I hope we can see that. I think everybody here would say, yeah, that'd be wrong to cheat on your, your besties, boyfriend or girlfriend. So that's what's happening here in Joseph's story. There's an invitation from the wife to do something that is not right. And you know, Joseph, Joseph could have said, you know, I, I think I could get away with this. I, I think I could have this affair with Potiphar's wife. Temptation could have gotten the best of him, but Joseph decided to go a different route. But he refused. With me in charge, he told her, my master does not concern himself with anything in the house. Everything he owns, he has entrusted to my care. No one is greater in this house than I am. My master has withheld nothing from me except you, because you are his wife. How then could I do such a wicked thing and sin against God? And though she spoke to Joseph day after day, he refused to go to bed with her or even be with her. And instead of giving in to Potiphar's wife, Joseph decided to do what was right. But it wasn't just one time. He, time and time again, chose to do the right thing. Because it, it wasn't just one invitation. Potiphar's wife kept coming to Joseph kept inviting him to go to bed with him. And every time, Joseph did the right thing and said no. Now, you'd think, you'd think this would really go well for Joseph, actually doing the right thing, and everything would turn out great. But did it? He did the right thing. And then we find out he gets sent to prison for it. But here's what happened. You see, um, so one time Potiphar's wife came to Joseph again with the inappropriate invitation. And this time she got a little bit closer and grabbed his cloak. It's like a coat. Well, Joseph tried to do the right thing, say no, and he ran away. Now we already know that Potiphar's wife is shady. And she does something shady, and, and then she actually tells everybody, Hey, Joseph came after me. I screamed for help. He ran away, and here I have his cloak. So she's seeking to have an affair. She's lying. She's a shady lady. Joseph was right, but he's the one who ends up in prison because Potiphar's not happy, right? Potiphar's not happy that this, this happened, so Joseph goes right to prison. We'll hear about what happens after that over the next two weeks. But for now, just, just think about it. You're Joseph, you've, you've been sold by your family, rejected by your family. You find yourself in a pit, you're going to die, but then you figure out, no, I'm gonna be sold to a bunch of traitors. And then things are going well, until you're back in captivity, you are in prison. It's not the way it's supposed to go when you do the right thing, right? You like you do the right thing and you are rewarded for it. I told you the story at Food Lion, but I found 20 bucks. But I want to tell you another story. When I was in ninth grade, I was in the high school band. We were on a trip somewhere and we rode in, in these buses. One day I found 20 bucks on the ground in, in the aisle of the bus. Well, I ended up turning that into the band director. And later that year, I actually got an award for that. At their big uh, ceremony, they, they recognized me for doing the right thing. But you know, it doesn't always end that way. Sometimes the right thing actually costs us something. That's what happened here with Joseph. So as you're thinking about doing the right thing, maybe you don't know what it is, and even if you do know what it is, it might cost you something. So this, this dilemma faces us all the time. What do I do when I don't know what to do? But learn from Joseph. Learn from Joseph here. He did the right thing because he had integrity. Integrity means being the kind of person who does what is right, 
regardless of the outcome and regardless of who is around. Because he operated with integrity, Joseph knew that choosing the right thing was the best decision no matter what would happen next. And here's what you can take from Joseph's story. When you don't know what to do, do the next right thing. When you don't know what to do, do the next right thing. So how, how can we do that? When you're struggling to do the next right thing or make the next right choice, what can we do to help us hold on to that integrity? First, see your situation. What situation are you in where you need to do the next right thing? Uh, your, your brain's fighting like, okay, I don't know what to do. What situation do you find yourself in where you need to do the next right thing? Maybe it's in a relationship that is pushing the boundaries. Maybe you need to have a conversation with your parents and you've been avoiding them. Maybe it's a friendship that needs to change. Whatever it is, what is it that you're struggling with? You don't know what to do. So see your situation, then identify the next right thing. Do you need to confess, confess something to your parent? Do you need to ask a friend for help with something? Do you need to apologize to someone in your life? Is there a party that you got invited to that you need to avoid? Do you need to have a tough conversation with a boyfriend or girlfriend? So you see your situation and then you identify the next right thing. And here's the final thing. Tell somebody. Tell somebody the next right thing that you're trying to do. You can talk to a trusted friend or someone at home about the steps you're trying to take and invite them to ask you that week, hey, did you do that next right thing? Let them help you take that, that next step. See your situation, identify your next right thing, tell someone the next right thing you're trying to do and do it. When you don't know what to do, do the next right thing. Let's pray. God, each of us is faced with situations where we have no idea what to do. On our own, by ourselves, we cannot do the next right thing. So we trust Jesus, the one who died for us and rose again from the dead, to help us be people of integrity. Those who choose to do the right thing, no matter who's watching, no matter where they are. And God, when we don't know what to do, give us strength to do the next right thing. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, the storm didn't come, still dry out, but I better get all this equipment inside before it starts pouring down and I get struck with lightning. But I think I'm actually safe because if the lightning came, it would hit the bell. So I better not touch it. That's all for now. Hey, until next time, do the next right thing, even though you don't know what to do. God's going to help you. So grace and peace. I'm out.